All right, title of my sermon is Does Total Depravity Hold Water? Turn to Romans chapter 4. Um, all right, I got a Wikipedia definition of total depravity. Um, it's a Christian theological doctrine derived from the concept of original sin. It is a teaching that as a consequence of the fall of man, every person born into this world is enslaved to the service of sin as a result of, fall, of their fallen nature and apart from the grace of God, is unable to choose to follow God, refrain from evil, or accept the gift of salvation as it is offers. What do you guys think? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Thumbs down, that's right. All right, so um, I don't claim to be a Calvinist um, uh, you know, expert, never known one that I know of. Um, um, the uh, what I Luke uh, kind of confirmed what I basically do know is that it come from a Catholic Reformation, right? So we should just be able to close our Bibles right now and go home because that's really uh, enough for me. But obviously we're here. We're not going to. We're going to go over um, total depravity and uh, what everything about uh, Calvinism really ultimately circles back to is you not having a choice, right? God chooses you for salvation. And uh, ultimately ends up pointing to works, right? You got to have faith. They tie faith and works together. And um, what I've learned is that uh, for Calvinists, you know, the foundation of Calvinism is tulip, right? The foundation of tulip is total depravity, right? So if you don't understand total depravity, you won't get the rest of tulip, right? Um, you guys are in uh, Romans chapter 4. Um, you know, talking about works, we can't go past verse 5. Uh, but to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Um, so there you have someone who uh, doesn't have works, right? And then they, uh, and, but they're counted for righteousness, right? Uh, their faith is counted for righteousness. Right. So, uh, but let's look on uh, down at verse 19. We're going to look at the subject matter of total depravity, and we're going to see that we have a choice. Um, verse 19, and being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's, Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded what he had promised he was able to also perform and therefore it was imputed unto him for righteousness now remember in verse 21 it said being fully persuaded right um so we know this is referring to um uh god's promise to abraham when he's uh going to give be a father of many nations and uh providing him a son through sarah's womb um but uh, going forward we're going to see that we're fully persuaded into salvation right so in verse 23 it says now it is written is not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him but also but for us also to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised up our jesus our lord from the dead so we see that the bible is not just talking about abraham being fully persuaded to have a son but it's also talking about us being fully persuaded into salvation so we have a choice right so my question is you know are you going to believe in the Calvinistic doctrine of tulip, total depravity, and all this other stuff, right? Or are you going to believe God's word, right? Are you fully persuaded? Um, so, um, you know, and we see it time and time going soul winning, right? We, we get people, you know, uh, fortunate for us, but, you know, it'd be a blessing that we can get people saved, right? People are fully persuaded out there. But we see time... Uh, every now and then where we have someone we're presenting the gospel to they're getting all the right answers they're following along with everything and it comes time to the end where they've got to make a choice right. right do they believe or do they not believe sometimes people just absolutely just choose not to believe it right and you know it's sad but there's that choice again right and if there was no choice then why did uh, Jesus tell us in Mark uh, uh, 16 uh, 15 and 16 and he said unto them, Go ye into the world, and preach the gospel to every key, creature. He that believeth and, and shall, who, he that believeth and baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not uh, shall be damned. So there's the choice right there, right? From believing and not believing. And, um, you know, he told us that because everyone has a choice. And it's up to us to give it to them. Uh, turn to John chapter 6. So... 
Uh, to get a better understanding of total depravity, I went ahead and I watched a, a YouTube video, uh, tried to get you know better understanding, right? And I found some like class, some guy was uh, teaching on specifically total depravity. And um, the first thing that, again, he said was, you know, it's the foundation of uh, TULIP, right? Total depravity is the foundation. If you don't understand that, you don't understand the rest. Um, and the, the first main point um, that he made was we, man, mankind, um, we're not able to do the will of God. And that right there just shows that they don't have an understanding of the will of God, right? You guys are in John chapter 6, verse 40, and this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up the last day. So by their concept of mankind not being able to do the will of God, it's just impossible for anybody to get saved, right? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Yeah. That's thumb downs, right? All right, so, um, you know, let's keep going. Um, because it doesn't stop there, right? Uh, the next teaching that he was teaching on was original sin. And this guy, you know, when, when he was up here teaching his class, he wasn't referring to the classical, what everybody thinks of original sin, where it's, you know, we're all going to hell because Adam sinned, and because he sinned, there's no hope for us, we're all going to hell, or we all, uh, um, you know, that's why we go to hell. Um, what he was saying was, because Adam, uh, you know, that was the punishment of sin, right? So because Adam sinned his punishment for sin was hell we sin as well and our our punishment is the same and to that i really can't uh, you know disagree with right the bible says for all of sin and falling short of the glory of god right we know that our punishment for our sin is hell um so you know going back uh from that point he was talking about this is where the the big um the big difference comes out of that is that uh we mankind are slave to sin in other words we're so consumed of sin, even when we were born, it's just impossible for us to convert ourselves, right? Um, it's, uh, it, God does everything when it comes to salvation, right? He chooses you specifically. There's, uh, you know, if, if he didn't choose you, sorry about your luck, there's no hope for you. Um, and some kind of divine intervention happens in your soul long before you ever hear the gospel, right? Thumbs up, thumbs down. <laughs> All right, so um, their go-to verse um to prove that they don't that nobody has a choice is in verse 44 you guys are in john chapter 6 verse 44 it says no man can come to me except the father which hath sent me draw him and i will raise him up the last day so remember we were just looking four verses back where it's talking about um god's will for us to believe uh believe in jesus and have everlasting life right um, but then their other go-to verse is verse 65. I just wanted you to keep that in mind. Uh, verse 65, and, and he said, Therefore said I unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my Father. So in between verses 44 and 65, Jesus is doing some good old independent fundamental Baptist preaching, right? You know, and, and what is he preaching? He's preaching salvation. Go back to uh, verse 53. It's in between this. It says, Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life. What do you have to do to have eternal life? Believe, right? So he's preaching salvation. And, um, you know, even his disciples are confused at what he's talking about here. And he picks up in verse 61. He says, When Jesus knew in, in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Doth this offend you? What and if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend where he was before? And he's talking about the resurrection here. Verse 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth. Uh, the, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they, they were that believed not and who should betray him. And, they, and he said, Therefore I said unto you, that no man come unto me, except it were given unto him uh, of my Father. So what's he talking about here in verse, um, in verse 65? He's talking about salvation. He's talking about the death, burial, and resurrection. He's talking about the gospel, which saves us, which is Jesus, right? So who, who gave us Jesus? The Father. The Father, right? So um, flip over to John chapter 12. And that we're going to go back, this is going to be referring to John chapter 6, verse 44, where it says, 
no man come to me except the Father which sent me, draw him, and I will raise him up the last day. So you guys are turning to John chapter 12, look at verse 32. And I, if I be lifted up from earth, will draw all men unto me. This he said, signifying what death he should die. So this is talking about his death in verse 33, and in verse 32 it's talking about his resurrection. Continue on in verse 34. The people answered him, We have heard out of the law that Christ abideth forever. And how sayest thou, the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is the Son of Man? So these people, they've heard about Jesus, right? But they, they don't know about the resurrection. They don't know about the gospel, right? They're, they have a misunderstanding of salvation, right? And, um, and, and let's see, I lost my place here. Continue on how, uh, in verse 35. And Jesus said unto them, Yet a little while the light is with you. He's talking about himself, right? Walk while ye have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whither he goeth. While ye have the light, believe in the light. Believe in him, right? Yet ye may be the children of light. John 1, 12. These things spake Jesus and departed and did hide himself from them. So how's he going to draw a man uh, near in, verse, uh, in chapter, uh, John chapter 6, verse 44? Well, John chapter 12, verse 32 explains it by the death, burial, and resurrection, by the gospel, by what we're saved, right? Um, so the foundation of Calvinism is tulip, right? The tulip doctrine. And the foundation of the tulip doctrine is total depravity. And the foundation of total depravity is John chapter 6, and it's all taken out of concept, Amen. right? So um, turn to Ephesians 2. We can't go, this is just, we can't uh, uh, not address works, right? Um, go to verse 8. It says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any uh, man should boast. So there's your distinguishment between um, faith and works, right? And we just read in uh, Romans chapter 4, But to him that worketh not, his faith is counted for righteousness. So, you know, it's by grace through faith that we're saved, and it's not of works, right? So there's a difference there. And then Ephesians uh, chapter, uh, chapter 2, verse 10 for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. And it says should there, right? Brother Fannin did a sermon the other uh, couple weeks ago about mandatory uh, good works, and I loved it, right? It spoke to me. And, you know, obviously we know that he wasn't referring to, you know, to get to heaven, right? It was while we're here on this uh, earth, right? So if we want to receive blessings from God here on this earth and avoid his chastisement here on this earth, we got to put the work in. And I kind of related that to my job, right? Um, you know, we've got guys this year, you guys know the line of work I'm in. Uh, every single one, they get a bonus. They have an opportunity to make a bonus every week, right? Some of them make a bonus every week, some of them every now and then, some of them don't make bonus at all, right? Um, this year, it was brought to their attention that if they don't sell wiper blades, they're not going to get bonus, right? So that, and that happens in 2020. So we're trying to get ahead of the game, right? We're trying to get guys on board with this. It's mandatory. They got to ask every single customer for wiper blades. It's mandatory. They got to fill out their progress every day on a dry erase board, right? Some of them choose not to do this, right? <laughs> Some of them uh make that choice but it's it's a it's a clear um same analogy right you know what i mean so they may choose not to ask every single customer for wiper blades right and, uh, but that doesn't mean that they're going to get fired right it's mandatory right they may get a talking to here and there right but same thing with salvation you know you may not choose uh to do good works right you may not you may not choose to put in the work but you're still going to heaven. You're, you're not going to hell for it, right? If you don't put those works in. And, you know, at the end of the day, you know, they may get, uh, they, they're not going to get fired, but they're uh, also not going to get a bonus. Same thing from God. You know, you're, you're not going to get a bonus. You're not going to get the rewards, you know? So, you know, we, we have a choice all the time. We choose our salvation. You know, we chose our salvation. We chose to believe, right, in Christ Jesus. And then, you know, we choose to come to church. We choose to read our Bibles. We choose to go out soul winning. And uh, turn, to, turn to Isaiah 66. This will be our close our Bible and go home's verse right here. And um, 
You know, it, it's just, it's important that you know we give the gospel to these Calvinists when we're knocking on doors. You know, that unsaved Calvinist soul is just as important as the next guy next door. And um, you know, let's let's look at uh, verse four here. I also will choose their delusions, and will bring their fears upon them. So why did he cho- why did he bring their fears upon them? Why did he choose their delusions? It says, because when I called, none didn't answer. When I sp- spake, they did not hear. So they were presented the gospel, right? Um, keep going. It said, but they did evil before mine eyes and chose that, which, that in which I delighted not. They chose not to believe, right? Um, they have a choice. Are you fully persuaded? All right. Um, so back to the question, does total depravity hold water? Not in my book. Amen. All right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, God, thank you for the opportunity to preach your word tonight. Just I pray that um, ultimately this was uplifting to the congregation most of all. I pray for the next guy uh, to stand up uh, up here and speak your words to him with your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen.